St. Anthony the Great was born in the year 251 AD in Coma, Egypt, to parents who possessed greater wealth than most. His parents, being faithful Christians, raised Anthony in the fear of God and according to the teachings of the Church. At around the age of 20, Anthony's parents fell asleep in the Lord, leaving him with his inheritance. Anthony was never one to take comfort in worldly pleasures, and therefore he constantly questioned what path he should take in life. And asking himself this question, one day he went to church and received his answer when the priest read the gospel. When Anthony heard the words of Christ commanding him, If you want to be perfect, go, sell what you have to the poor, and you will have treasure in heaven, and come, follow me. He was shaken and realized that God was talking directly to him and immediately he took all of his inheritance and gave it away to the poor. He then decided to seclude himself away from society so that he could pray better in a quiet and peaceful environment. And so Anthony lived on the outskirts of his native town in a small hut under the supervision of an experienced elder who guided him through his spiritual battles and temptations. He divided his time between prayer, work, and the reading of the Holy Scriptures. Once he himself had gained enough experience in the ascetical life, he left his hut and went to live in an empty and abandoned grave, which served as a reminder to him of his mortal nature, and that everyone will respond for their actions to the righteous judge. He remained there for the next twenty years, until the year 306 A.D. St. Anthony endured great temptations from the evil one, to which he always responded by increasing his ascetical works. One night, when the evil one saw that he could not trick Anthony through his many vicious snares, he sent a horde of demons to scare Anthony away from his ascetical life. And so, that night the walls of his grave began to quake, as if his surroundings were about to topple onto him, and many demons gathered around him, taking on forms of various beasts. The place became full of lions, bears, leopards, bulls, cobras, scorpions, and wolves, each seeming to get ready to harm Anthony. The lion roared, the cobras coiled themselves, the wolves seemed ready to charge. However, God, who allows these temptations for one's own spiritual growth, did not permit the demons to harm Anthony in any way. And so, Anthony, out of his great faith, and wisdom said to them almost mockingly, If you demons had any true power, one of you would have been enough to come and kill me. However, the Lord has dominion over you, and therefore you came in great numbers to frighten me. And if you truly can attack me, come and do so. But if you cannot, you ought to leave, for why do you toil in vain? And the devils ground their teeth in anger. However, Anthony mocked them all the more. But God had not forsaken Anthony in this temptation, and he came to his aid. For as he looked upwards, he saw the heavens opening up and rays of light descended down upon him. Immediately the demons disappeared, and Anthony's weakened body was made strong once again. And having recovered from this great trial, Anthony began to pray to God, saying, Where were you, my Christ? Why did you not show yourself at the beginning? so that you could have eased my suffering. And a loud voice said to him, Anthony, I was here present, and I waited to see your ascetic labors. And because you were long-suffering and were not conquered, I will forever help you, and I will make you renowned everywhere. After hearing this, he arose and prayed fervently, becoming even stronger in faith, from that time on, Anthony's ascetical labors became far greater, and in turn his spiritual fruits grew as well. 
After a while, his desire to seclude himself grew even stronger, and so he withdrew into the sandy mountains off of the right banks of the Nile River. On account of his spiritual level, many other ascetics came to live near him so that they could benefit from his spiritual wisdom. Out of these ascetics, Anthony formed two monastic communities. One day, Anthony and some of his disciples were forced to cross the Nile River so that they could get to the other side where some of his followers resided. However, the river was full of crocodiles, making it impossible to cross. Anthony then began to pray, and being enlightened by the Holy Spirit, he and his disciples mounted the backs of the crocodiles and rode them to the other side, remaining unharmed. Later on, he deserted this place alongside the other monks that had gathered around him over the years, and he went into the wilderness that surrounded the Red Sea, from which he only came out of from time to time to give advice to pilgrims who would run to him knowing that he was a man of God. And to all he would say, Nothing in this world should be honored and revered more than the great love of Christ. And he reminded them always of the great joys that are to come to those who fight the good fight in the name of Christ. In regards to living a moral and Christian life, St. Anthony wrote to one of his disciples, People consider themselves rational, however unjustly, because they are not rational. Some learned the words and books of the ancient wise men, but the rational are only those who have a rational soul. They can distinguish what is good and what is evil. They avoid those things which are evil and harmful to the soul, and all of their care is towards those things which are good and of use to the soul. And these things they do with great appreciation towards God. Only these people should call themselves rational. A person who is truly rational only has a single concern, to always listen to God and to be pleasing to Him. And their soul only consists of this, how to be more pleasing to God thanking him for making them so mindful and for overseeing everything, no matter what fate they may have in life. Because it is not right to thank doctors for giving us bodily health, whom give us bitter and unpleasant remedies, but to not thank God for those things which seem difficult to us, and to not realize that everything happens as it should have, towards our personal benefit and according to his great care, because based on our knowledge and faith towards God, our salvation and spiritual perfection are determined. I have received from God virtuous and great powers, self-restraint, suffering through different evils, righteousness, diligence, patience, and other similar things which help us stand and fight against those which are evil. Having these powers at hand and putting them to work, we reckon that nothing else unpleasant, painful, or unbearable happens to us. We then believe that everything is of human nature and that they can be overcome by our virtues. The lawless do not think in this way. Because of this they do not understand that everything happens to us for our benefit and the way it should for our own use, that our virtues may shine brightly and so that we can be crowned by God. St. Anthony died in the year 356 A.D. and was buried in an unknown place, having only two trustworthy disciples alongside him, to which he commanded that his grave should remain a secret.